So welcome to the session as we look at networking, a tool for career and business growth. Networking is a very powerful tool. And in many of my courses and many of my sessions, I have shared how networking has played a big role in uh, my life and in my career as a person. And uh, is both online and of course, physical networking or in-person networking. But I don't encourage people to put networking as a maybe or a plan B or a, or, or a normal tool. No, networking should be one of your most important strategies as far as career and business growth is concerned. So if you are listening to this and you have not been, uh, uh, you have not made networking as one of your most important tools as far as your career advancement is concerned and career growth is concerned, I encourage you after this, you need to put networking at the top of the top as far as your strategies are concerned. Okay, so it's very critical for you to do that. Networking is very powerful. Networking is that tool that can take you to a strange country where you have never been just because of how you are able to network online or on any social media platform. Networking is a tool that can be used for problem solving. You know, see, it's going deep can be used for problem solving. You can use networking for personality development. You can use networking for professional growth. You can use networking for societal progress. You can use networking for business progress. You can use networking to access opportunities. You can be going through a challenge, but because you know somebody who has that particular skill, you can work with that person and solve that particular problem. Many people are stranded because they don't have the right people around them that they can collaborate with to solve a particular problem. Networking can help you to develop a better personality. There are many people that have become more confident. They, they, they have better careers and better business. They are facing life more confident because they, are, they have become my friends or they have become part of my community. So as a result of connecting with me or being close to me or listening to me, their personality has been impacted, right? Same for professional growth. You get Networking can open you up to new professional opportunities, new courses, new learning material, new conferences, new workshops. You are able to grow professionally. You are going through this session because of networking. By one way or the other, we got connected. By one way or the other, you got connected to the platform. And now every day you can go through a lesson that contributes to your mental growth, which directly impacts how you grow in your profession. Societal progress. People can partner and do a community project as a result of networking. There are people here in, in, in the platform that have partnered and they have organized a seminar for young people in the community. You see that? So because of the networking and coming together, they're able to execute a project that is leading to societal progress. You now see why I, I started by telling you, if you have been making, if you have not made networking as one of your most important tools, where you are very intentional, very intentional at connecting with new people and reaching out to new people, then you need to start doing that today. Make networking one of your most important advancement tools in career and in business. Stop 
keeping it a secondary option. Stop being shy from reaching out to new people. That is why after this, you need to stop wearing the cap of I am an introvert. Stop being afraid of people. Stop being shy of reaching out to people. The worst thing that can happen when you reach out to somebody is you'll be ignored. When somebody ignores you, you don't die. They don't cut your arm for ignoring you. So why are you afraid of reaching out to people and trying to build relevant relationships that can contribute to your career and business growth? You get a point. Some of you need to repent immediately after this. In short, so I'm talking to some of you in your heart right now. I'm, I'm hitting your heart right now. Because you know, you know yourself that you have not been doing things right. Hmm? If you are guilty of this, indicate the job of them to you. I know some of you now. If you don't indicate, I'll call your names. You're always hiding behind the scenes like a chief priest. Since then, if, the, if you look at the last one month, if I ask you in the last one month, which intentional action have you taken to build a relevant relationship with somebody you will not tell me? So there should be an advancement after today. It's very important. Networking is significantly required in somebody's professional life because isolation will never let you become part of an office, a workplace, or a business community. There is nothing that isolation gives you. As I always say, anytime you are isolating yourself, it should be for the purpose of learning, strategizing, and growing. But isolation doesn't mean that you lock yourself up. It also means that you just stay in your corner. You don't meet new people at all. You are just there as if you are deaf and you're dumb. You don't reach out to people. You don't take the initiative to reach out to somebody you know that has something to offer to you. That's isolation. If, you're, if for the last one month, the whole of July or August or whatever month, if you have stayed and you have not intentionally identified somebody online or offline, and you have not reached out to that person to strike a meaningful conversation because you need that relationship, you are in isolation. You are in isolation. And that is not helping you as a professional. That is not helping you as a business person. And there's difference between acquaintances and relevant relationships. Even like in this, in this platform, this PPA, there are some of you that we don't have a relationship. The only thing we have is that we are in the same group and we are part of the community. It was a relationship. We have never really spoken one-on-one. -on -one. But there are people that when they come to Duwala and I'm in the office, they call and they come and meet me. Now that's how to establish a relationship. When I come to Yaoundé, I travel to different cities and I announce that I want to meet people. That is to build a relationship. And relationship costs money. Right? I say, okay, oh, who's around? Come, let's go for dinner. I pay for the food and all of that. I am intentionally investing in establishing our relationship. And those are things you should be doing with people you see or you notice that, look, I need to build a relationship with this particular person. Stop isolating yourself, both online and offline. Be intentional. Reach out to somebody. If you see somebody doing something extraordinary or somebody you think that you guys can work something together, reach out to the person. Send them a message. WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Facebook, email, whatever. If it's on-site, go to their office. It's very important to do that. Because it will, see, 
Opportunities are in people. Every opportunity you're looking for is in somebody. All the money you're looking for is in somebody's bank account or a, a wallet. Until they know you, until you connect with them, you can never be part of that wealth system. Some people are employed. And if they, if they are connected to the right professionals in the marketplace, just a simple uh, text message to them. Hello, sir. Hello, ma. I am currently unemployed and I have the following skills. Please, if you see any opportunity in your company or around some of your colleagues, please kindly recommend me. And imagine you can send to 10, 15, 20 people. You cannot be stranded. Even if they don't give you a job at the moment, at least 20 relevant people who are top leaders in the corporate sector, private sector, in the marketplace, they know that you're unemployed and you have the following skills and they can recommend you at any time. Relationships. Same for business. Networking is the core element for professional growth. The more you will connect with people, the bigger the network you will create and the easier your life will become. Oh yes, the easier your life will become. Networking can ease your life. Let me tell you a story about this man I'm with in this picture. His name is Jeff. Jeff is one of my best friends. Jeff is my best friend. So I don't know if you've been around me or seen him somewhere. Jeff's my best friend. This is the first time I met Jeff. Jeff left Douala and came for this, for this seminar I was organizing when, I was, when my office was in Yaoundé. That's the first time we met. He bought the book, all of that, and he left. And that was how we stayed in contact. You see? That was how we stayed connected. And when I was located to Douala, guess what? I did not have to rent for a house. Jeff helped me for about eight months or almost at that time. He was willing to take care of me and do everything. It made my life easy. Opened me up to more people, right people in Douala. You see, the power of networking. But he just said that this somebody I would like to meet her, all of that. And he came, paid his travel from Douala, slept in a hotel, whatever, and just for, to establish that connection. And today we became best friends. What have you invested in? You know, it's the same that there are some people in PPA that when they reach out to me, I give them a lot of attention. Do you know why? Relationships. It's not about money. It's not about gift. It, but it's just about what they have done to, to, to place value on the quality of what they see as far as relationships are concerned. It could just be as simple as checking on somebody once in a while. Hey, how are you doing? I'm just checking on you. That alone can build a relationship. What am I trying to say? For relationships to be relevant, there must be exchange of value and attention. Saving somebody's number on your phone doesn't mean that you guys have a relationship. I hope you know that. That's why internal networking is very important. This way you network with highly qualified individuals that can lead to career development. Like we are in this community, Peak Performance Academy right now. Some of you, you have not, there are so many great people in PPA right now. You need to reach out to people in PPA and connect with them. That's internal networking. You see? But some of you have not done that. Even in your office where you work, you don't have relevant relationships with the right people even. Not to talk of the places where you go and all of that. But it's very important to practice internal networking. Before you're looking for network relationships outside, make use of the communities you are already part of. That's what is called internal networking. By networking with highly qualified individuals, which can lead to career development and business success. I'm using the word highly qualified intentionally. Don't go and network with any kind of Tom and Jerry. Observe people, reach out to people, talk to them, get to know what they do, look at the value they carry and look at the value you can bring to their life. 
So don't forget about internet networking. So as I always say, connections are better opportunities. Jobs never fall from the sky. You get a job through somebody. There are who have had business deals because somebody recommended them. So connections leads to better opportunities. See, if your life is, if you don't have access to so many opportunities, one of the hindrances to lack of opportunities in your life is poor networking. You, you, don't have, you have poor relationships. You don't have high quality relationships. Like personally for me, I am always having opportunities here and there. Oh, come and speak here. Come and consult here. Come and do this. Come and do that. One of those reasons is as a result of the large network I have. You can also do that. Connections for better opportunities. Are you stranded? Are you struggling? You want to make more sales in your business? Build more relevant networks. It's very important. Especially for startups. One of the biggest strengths for a startup entrepreneur is relationships. It leads, they, they buy from you, they recommend you, they can talk about their business, and that is how you get more business deals. It is hard for a talented, skilled person to be unemployed for long if they have relevant relationships or, rele or in a relevant community. Like if you're in PPA right now and you're stranded, just come and share in the WhatsApp group. That, okay, you don't have a job right now and you have the following skills. Anybody in the community can recommend you if there's an opportunity. Simple. More than 100 people in a community whereby everybody is goal-oriented have seen that you have the following skills and you're looking for a job. They can recommend you. They can see an opportunity at any time and recommend you. In the same PPA, people share scholarships, they share job opportunities and all of that. That is the power of connections and relationships. Learning through interconnected professional network community is very important, right? That's also what happens when you build networks. You learn. You learn from the people in your professional network, professional community. Like you're learning through PPA right now. You have been learning in the past. Because there's power in learning. You will never create value more than the quality of your knowledge and skills. And there is a lot of power when you can learn from diverse people, diverse professionals. You learn a lot of deep things, practical stuff. Professionally driven ideas are shared, which contribute to your quality of knowledge and skills and exposure. Therefore, to make networking work for the growth and development of both yourself, your career, and your business, you have to build what? Sustainable relationships. Instead of just adding to your number of connections or just adding phone numbers into your phone or emails into your email address book, you need to build sustainable relationships. This way, exchange of value gets to happen. What value can you exchange with somebody to build a relationship? It could be as simple as taking somebody out for dinner, for lunch. It could be as simple as buying a gift for somebody. It must not be expensive. Buy according to your financial abilities. But it is about the heart and the spirit behind the gift. What can you offer to do? You can even offer your time and your resources. It can help build a relationship. You see somebody struggling with something and you can do it, create time, go use your skills and serve that person. Bam, you have established a relationship. You have indebted them already. You have indebted their moral bank account. They will always, no matter what, look at you in a different way. 
There are many of you who start to me, I give you some of my books for free, some of my courses for free, and all of that. What do you think I'm doing? I'm building a relationship with you. I am indebting your moral bank account. No matter what, you always look at me in a different way, that I care about you, I care about your growth. But that's a fact. That automatically gives a special place in your heart about me. You see? So you need to invest intentionally. I never joke with the opportunity I have to show kindness or to care for somebody or to serve somebody. Because I am doing it intentionally because I know that I am investing in an asset known as relationship. So I don't treat building relationship as as a secondary option. No, it's not. It's a primary strategy for me. And I encourage you, it should be a primary strategy for you as far as growth is concerned. Who is being challenged and being blessed? Are you being challenged? Leave me a comment in the chat box. Good. I hope you are making decisions. Or we are making new decisions as far as building relationships is concerned. Good. Let's proceed. Now, let me share with you three types of networking as for this stage. Three types of networking. Number one is what I call operational networking. Building relationships with people you do business with on a regular basis from suppliers to colleagues. This is very important. This is where you scan through your immediate network. Look at who is that person that I do business with frequently. Let me give you an example. Um, there, there's Mervis here. Mervis is from PPA. She's my mentee. But Mervis, we outsource our taxes and all of that to Mervis company, right? So I think we, we invited Mervis last time when we were celebrating our Labor Day stuff. That was intentional because we do business with her every month, right? So it's not just about just doing transactional stuff. No, let there be a relationship in the process. It's not just about transaction, transaction. No, transactions don't give relationships, but there should be some humanness added to it. That's just an example, right? So you can look at, it's not just about supplies. That person that you buy, you buy goods from and resell. Why not invite them to your house Sunday evening to eat your traditional meal? You understand? That alone takes the relationship to the real level, not just operations, but it, 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 it builds something different. You, you get the example, right? You get the example. So it could be a colleague. There's a colleague in the office that you guys really do a lot of work together. Next time, take them out, invite them to your place or on a Sunday, not, not on a normal lunch day in the office, no. On a separate day, Saturday, Sunday, take them out. You guys will get some coffee or eat some traditional food and you say, no, I just want to share with you. This is what is called operational networking. Look at your immediate surroundings. Who, who is that person? Who are those group of people that you really operate with them on a regular basis? Move that relationship from a transactional relationship and add some humanness to it. It plays a very big role tomorrow. You get the point? So invest in your operational relationships. Very important. Number two is personal relationships. Personal relationships. This helps you find support when you go through rough patches in your career and personal life. This is where you need to have some, this is why I'd like to talk about your, your personal circle. Who are those you, you need to, apart from just having operational people about work, but do you have people that are personal to you? Personal relationships are very important. These are people that you can share your private stuff with and they can step up and help you when you're going through difficult and rough patches. 
These are people that they can give you their house to live in when you have difficulties at a particular point in your life. You see, you, you, this is a food that you can go above and beyond to help them. You, you establish a personal relationship. Intentionally have a personal circle is very important. Some people have like their coaches and their mentors as part of this circle. Very important. Don't just exist like that and just have those business, business friends, professional friends only. Sometimes when you'll be stranded in the night in your house, some professional friends cannot leave their house at 1 a.m. to come and look for you. You know that, right? Yes. But when you have personal relationships that are worth it and you have invested in and you guys have a code, a trusted, that's one thing that I encourage people to do. Sit down and don't assume that somebody is a personal friend. Sit down and have a discussion. Look, I see you as somebody that we can do stuff together. I want us to really be close friends at this particular level. And I want us to be close friends driven by principles like integrity, honesty, togetherness, standing there for each other, praying for one another, fasting for each other. You can establish a code for this. You see? And they know, and you know, that if they're in trouble, you, you will stand up for them and help them. It's very powerful. You need it. Number three, strategic networking. Yes, this is when you target someone who would add a specific benefit to your network as far as your career and business is concerned. Yes, strategic network. There's a particular target where you can sit and you can say, okay, no what? I need to have a relationship with the governor. I need to have a relationship with the senator. I need to have a relationship with the CEO of this company. You target a particular person because you know why you need that person in your network. This is me in Atlanta, Georgia, with the former president of Clark Atlanta University. Targeted networking, strategic networking. You, you reach out to somebody out of the blue. You can go to the office, get a bottle of wine. I have done that several times. You can buy a significant gift, reach out to the office, introduce yourself. Make sure you have good questions outlined. Questions that when you ask them, they'll be thought provoking and they'll see that you're an intelligent person and you are also worthwhile. Tell them the kind of value you can also bring to the table if you guys get to work together. Strategic networking. Many people are struggling in career and businesses because they are weak as far as strategic networking is concerned. Apart from their friends, apart from their immediate colleagues at work, they have no other networking layer that they can bank upon. You need that. You need strategic networks around you for greater advancement. It can, and this kind of networking can challenge you. It can lift you from the level where you are to a higher level. There are some people where you can only network with them very well or work with them very well when they will send their hand down and bring you up to their level and automatically your life changes and advances to a new level. But until you take the effort to target them and connect with them and reach out to them, their hand will never come down to pick you up to their level. Don't be afraid. They, as, I, as I told you earlier, the worst thing that can happen, the worst thing that can happen is that they will ignore you. But it's okay. You have tried. You have done your best. Look for the next person. 
may have been ignored, but also have been accepted. Don't let one, 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 one closed door uh, stop you from opening more doors ahead of you. There was a time I tried to connect to a senator. He didn't have my time. But now I have like four senator friends in Cameroon who are my, who are my friends and they like me a lot. <laughs> right? You see? Now imagine I was, just, I was just avoiding them. Oh, no, 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 no. My, this man, this senator is very full of pride and all of that. It's not going to help. Many, many times people don't reach out because they are afraid of that they will ignore you. They, and then what happens? When they ignore you, move to the next person. Don't let one action steal success from you. Because one human being ignored you, you, know, one, you want to now generalize that seven billion people are like that. No, there are still good people out there who are humble in spirit and willing to work with you and connect with you. Don't do a generalization. Because one human being who has issues with character or behavior, or maybe you meet them in a bad day even, you now conclude that they are not a, he or she is not a good person. Stop concluding on people and the society. You are the one that has a problem, not the society. Go to the next person. Even if 10 people ignore you, go to the 11th person. That's my mentality. Me, I will keep knocking. I will keep going. Keep going. I, on, if, if 7 billion people ignore me, then I will know that he has gone bad. <laughs> Apart from that, you ignore me, it will never affect my emotions in any way. It will never affect my self-esteem. It will not do anything to me. But I am, I am happy that I try to connect with you. But you know one thing I always say to myself, when you ignore me, I say, look, someday we will sit on the same platform or someday you will sit and watch me. And then you and it's happened many times. When I someone to look for me and say, ah, this is this you? Say, yes, it's me. It's me. So when somebody ignores you, let it be a challenge. Let it challenge you to work harder and build more value in a way that they cannot ignore you. Are you getting me? Yes, that should be your commitment. Don't go and cry that one human being ignored you. Oh, yeah, baby. That's cry that we don't give biscuits. How to grow your professional network. These are the practical steps I expect you to start taking from tomorrow. Not tomorrow, this morning. Number one, attend events online and offline. For those who are my mentees, for example, I always challenge them. For example, how many events? So that I just I just ask from the blue. They will, if you ask them, they will tell you how many events do you attend this month? Which event are you attending this month? I'll just something that just ask from the blue, because I treat this with a lot of importance. Attend events. There's no better way to meet new people than attending events. Attend events. Get leads. Get contacts. That's the first step. When you get the contacts, make sure you reach out to them. You cannot be in your father's house for, for 12 months and expect to succeed. Who is going to live? Who is going to work with you? Go out. Step out. There are free events on LinkedIn for free. You don't need to pay to attend online. There are many offline events. You even need to pay. Pay and go there. Because you know the quality of the relationship that you get from that place. You have a problem if you stay for one month as a professional or an entrepreneur where you have not attended an event. At least one online event. And don't just attend and be behind the scenes. No, reach out to people, connect, and try to establish a relationship before you are ignored. But stop assuming that you'll be ignored. Who told you that you'll be ignored? Except you have bad character and you ignore people before you start assuming that somebody will ignore you. You know, you, you, many human beings are always supposed to be afraid of what they do now. Yes. But if you know that you are a jovial person and you reach out to people, you, you believe that another human being is also that same way before you are disappointed. I prefer to be like that. I prefer to have hope and believe that I will get this thing before I'm disappointed. I don't just conclude in my heart with my, with my biased opinion. It's not going to help me in any way. If 
attend events. It's going to expose you to new people. Number two, hang out at the same places the people you want to connect with hang out. It's very important. Very strategic, especially for strategic networking. There are some places where you will never see certain human beings. I know many people that don't, um, they don't, they don't go to any restaurant or any hotel that is below four star. They want to go and eat. They have particular restaurant to go and eat in. If it's not a four star restaurant, five star restaurant in a hotel, they don't go. I'm just giving an example. You see, there are some people that if you need to first of all know where do these kind of people hang out. That's why there are some people that they go to golf courses where people where rich people play golf and they try to connect with them. Me, I have gone to a church to worship in a church so I could, I could meet somebody. Me, I've done that on a Sunday. Go to a particular church and worship there so that I could meet somebody. Hmm? You see that? Yes, because I know that's where the person hangs out. That's the only way I could see that person. Maybe the, the person plays soccer, football on Saturdays as sports. Okay, dress up one day and go play football there too. You know what you're looking for and connect with the person. You see, maybe the person has a professional networking meeting that they attend every Saturdays or every Sundays. Try to go to that networking meeting and connect with the person. You see, so you need to connect, be strategic in this. Don't, don't, don't just be blind and, and go everywhere. Number C, be noticeable. Yes, if you are not noticeable, you will not connect with amazing people. Be noticeable online. Be noticeable offline. Be active in the community. Reach out to a local radio station and say you want to be a guest on the show before they, they reject you. I've done that several times. I have been rejected on many TV stations in Cameroon in, in, those, in those years. Before I was, before I started, I became popular and they were not inviting me. But I used to reach out. I want to be a guest on your show and they will ignore me. What have you done so far? <laughs> but do your best to be noticeable. There are many relevant, valuable conditions I have established because a, 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 a successful man or a government person has heard me talking on TV or on radio, and then they look for my contact and reached out to me. Noticeable. Build a good brand on the internet. Have a good profile. Comment what makes sense on, 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 on relevant posts. Don't go and be commenting on giveaways and, and gossiping a, a, a post here and there. Nobody will notice you there. On the fellow gossipers and funny, funny people will notice you. No relevant human being gossip is you see them on that kind of post. Go to news platforms, go to economic news platforms, go to business platforms. Don't just read and stay silent. Leave a relevant comment. That's how somebody will notice you. May have left comments on platforms. Go reach out to me inbox and say, I love your perspective. What do you do? You see? That's how you get your noticeable. Create content. Right in your field. You cannot claim to be an expert and you don't talk about a, a, a professional stuff in your sector. How will you be noticeable? You need to wake up. Do your part to be noticeable. To conclude, it is possible to experience career growth and success as long as you follow the process I've shared with you. To advance your career, you need to have a plan. What am I saying? I encourage you, establish a networking plan. Establish a networking strategy. It could be as simple as every month you will attend at least one online event and one physical event. Every month, you will look at 
if you are if you're in WhatsApp groups with professionals, you pick two people every week and reach out to them, send them a message and connect with them and know what they do and introduce yourself. That is a plan. You reach out on Facebook and LinkedIn, especially LinkedIn. Reach out to professionals on LinkedIn that you have connected with, introduce yourself, know what they do and try to relate with them. It could be content that you create once a week in your sector as a professional. Have a plan to build relevant networks. It will not just fall from the sky. It will not. Have a plan. Anything that is important to you should always have a plan. As I always say, if you are not planning to succeed, it means you are planning to fail. If you don't have a plan to build relevant networks as far as your career and business is concerned, it means you don't care. Wait till the day that you'll be stranded somewhere and just one phone call will deliver you from that place and you would have nothing to do. Then you would know the importance of building relevant networks. See, I can tell you, your finances, your career, your business will automatically experience a certain level of growth when the right people start entering your life. Because when they enter, they also bring stuff. They bring their wisdom, they bring their resources, they bring their networks, they bring a lot of things. It also gives you the opportunity to expose your talent and your skills and what you can do. And boom, you can be able to do the things you have always dreamt to do. So what decision are you making after this session today right now? What decision are you making? What are you going to do? Will you keep shying away from people? Will you keep concluding that you're afraid? Will you keep wearing the cap that you're an introvert and you don't want to reach out to people? It's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you. But let me tell you, if you reach out, you're gonna enjoy the benefits. And one thing about relationship is that it can benefit you today, tomorrow, in the next 10 years. It can benefit you. There's always a blessing. And I'm not saying that you're going to meet all perfect people. No, you're going to also meet people that are going to backstab you. They're going to, uh, they're going to do funny, funny stuff. But don't conclude that, that, that everybody is bad. That's what is killing most human beings. Because they have one funny challenge with one, one person, they now conclude that, no, uh, they just exclude themselves. That's nonsense. It's not going to help you in any way. Me, I have been betrayed. But it doesn't mean that there's no good in the world again. No, there is good. There are good people. There are kind people. There are humble people. There are people who, who, are, who are full of integrity and honesty. I just need to keep on building relationships and discovering them. That is my goal. I should not let one human being fool me that the rest of the world is bad. That's a lie. The rest of the world is not bad. There are so many good people out there. And sometimes people relate to you based on how you approach them for the first time. If you approach them with laissez faire, laziness, dishonesty, and all of that, they, they, they will show you. Every human being has the good, the bad, and the ugly. Every man being has that. That's why the kind of the kind of personality that you also manifest and show out there is very critical. That's how people are going to take you. You're serious. You're committed. You're a man of your word. The other side knows that you see this person when it comes to this when it comes to joy. But now I have I have friends that that when they do other friends they tell lies, they lie, they lie. But when it comes to me, they are straight. They are straight because they know I will not take nonsense. I don't lie to you, so don't lie to me. You lie to me, I discover there are consequences. You are straight. Come out. 
maintain the kind of character and how you want to be perceived, it plays a very big role in how other people perceive you. If you are reaching out to somebody for the first time, make sure you have the personality of somebody who has something to offer. Don't reach out as a beggar, as a struggling person, as somebody who, who is confused. No, reach out as somebody who understands and is a professional. That's how they will take you. People don't like beggarly, struggle-looking, confused human beings. They bring burdens. They bring burdens. I'll tell you that. Me, I don't like that kind of person. You bring, I like someone who, bring, who knows what they're doing. And they're they 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 upbeat. They're positive. They're they excited. They're willing to advance in life. That kind of person, you are excited to help because they're bringing the right energy around you. And they can also contribute to advancing your own life. They're coming and you're bringing sorry face and funny, funny, doubt, poor looking face. You are, you, they will avoid you now because you're bringing, they already have issues. You're bringing problems. They're bringing bad news. They're bringing burdens to them. Who likes burdens? Nobody. Mm -hmm. So how you reach out to the first time is very important. Okay, good. So thank you so much for going through the session. And uh, go take actions. Relevant knowledge is useless if you don't act upon it.